Hello everyone, this is the Fidel Master Alessandro Santagati and in this video I'm going to comment the game between the Grandmaster of Grand Zuniga, very strong Grandmaster, he was uh, 2700 a few years ago, now it's 2640 uh, uh, against uh, the International Master Giuseppe Letieri from Italy. Um, Letieri rating is uh, 2426 and okay let's go to see the game. Grand Zuniga played c4 and Letieri played e5. Okay, normal strategy to control the center. So knight c3, knight f6, development, g3. Usually, when white plays g3, a very good idea is play d5 quickly because uh, white is planning to play bishop g2 and white idea is block the square on d5. So it's very important to play d5 as soon as possible because in this way you can take back with the knight and when bishop g2 you are ready to move the knight away for example on b6 um okay so after that we can see that white plays b3 to develop the bishop on b2 bishop e7 and bishop b2 castle rook c1 um, rook c1 um, is okay, uh, was also possible play knight f3, that is also a common move in this kind of position, to develop the knight. Uh, I think the reason about rook c1 is that white wants to wait in order to develop the knight, and uh, the idea of rook c1 is make pressure against the pawn c7. So, f5 was played, and f5 is a good idea to take space in the center, and maybe make an attack on the king side. And f5 is also useful because uh, black wants to bring the bishop to f6. And if the bishop f6 immediately, very often white can go knight d5, uh, knight d4 or knight d5. Not knight d5 now because there are two defenders, but I mean in the future maybe it could be possible. But okay, knight d4 maybe is the main reason. So the knight can go to e4. And this knight on e4 can attack the bishop. So if black idea is bring the bishop to f6, f5 is, is useful because now the square e4 is defended by the pawn and the bishop f6 is possible so that's the point about this move and uh, after that d3 bishop f6 and then knight f3 c 6 castle and now i think a good idea could be also now play bishop e6 develop the last piece and, and sometimes consider move like knight d5 or knight d4 to fight for the center. But black played knight d4 and this move is okay. Um, but maybe white can react with d4. That could be a good idea for white. The idea about d4 is block this bishop on f6. Okay, for one end there is the weakness on d3, but for another hand this bishop is blocked and after move like knight f3, queen f3. The pawn f5 is under attack, so we can imagine that white will take here. So I mean black will take here and then knight takes c4 is good. Because this knight can fight for this square. So I think that for white after after e4, so I mean after knight e4, e4 was a good idea to fight for the square e4. And we said before that okay, black idea with the 5 is avoid knight e4. With e4 we fight for this move and that's a good idea for white. But Grand Zuniga didn't play it, he played knight e1 and then c6. c6 is a logical move to defend b7 because when the bishop will go out, the pawn b7 will be under attack by the pawn, by the bishop, so c6 is useful to block the bishop on g2. e3. The knight has to go back, so knight e6. And now the point is that after this move, the d3 square is, um, is weak. So that's the point f4. The idea is to remove the pawn e5 to give white the possibility to push the 4 ladder. That's the idea, so e f4, g f4. And now this pawn is weak, but in theory white can push it in the future. But if white will push the 4, e3 will be a weakness, so it's not so easy for white to push those pawns. So I think black is lighter better now. So knight c7, queen d2, a5. Okay, um, in this position for sure d3 is a weakness, but probably a weakness is not enough to win the game. So Lakiri now played a very good move, a5. The idea is attack with a4 
and basically the idea is try to trade the pawn A for the pawn B and uh, in this case in the in this way the pawn A would be the target opening the A file so A4 for example if now BA4 we have uh, we have knight takes A4 the E file is open so also A2 now is a problem D3 is a problem A2 is a problem if you have only one weakness is good but if you have two weaknesses or more weaknesses usually this can be enough to win the game so that's very important and this is the strategy that Letieri followed in this game but Grand Zulinica decide to trade the bishops and then play b4 so trying to block the position for one end this idea is good because okay for sure white blocking the position can try to defend but for another end there is another problem the problem is a3 uh, Letieri didn't play his move immediately but I think also a3 now is good because this pawn on a3 is very good because uh, Black can have the plan to attack a2, and if white, if black can take the pawn a2, then the pawn a3 will be very strong in the end game because is a uh, um, pass pawn, far pass pawn, very advanced, so it's a very good uh, um, thing for black. So a3, it's a uh, it's now a strong move. Okay, Letieri didn't play it. Letieri played rook d6, but rook d6 is also fine. Then bishop e6, and then. After knight f3, he played king h8 to have the king safe. And then after a few moves, queen g8 to defend this bishop and to keep a piece in this diagonal. Because yes, the knight can take, but the queen will keep the control of this diagonal. So knight e6, queen e6. And after that, rook e1. Rook d8, continuing to make pressure. And now king h1. And now f3. Uh, in theory, it's also possible to play... Mm, it's not possible, so I mean, it's not possible for white play free to block a3 because if white plays a3, there is knight c4, I think, and this knight is attacking the queen, is attacking the pawn, and this pawn on d3 is pinned. If rook takes knight, we can simply take with the queen, and then we win an exchange because after rook c4, queen c4, pawn c4, rook d2, black is having an exchange, and there are a lot of weaknesses, for example, a3, e3, and uh, for sure, black has a winning end game. So that's a bad problem. For this reason, after King H1, okay, Black now played A3, key move, because now the idea is uh, exploit this strong pawn on the A file. Rook C5 was played, and now Knight C4, very strong move, Knight C4. Again, the same trick. So if Rook takes, Queen takes, and Black is better. If the Queen go away, like here, Knight B2, very strong move. Simply attack the pawn D3. Now there are three attackers, one, two, and three against two defenders. So white has to find a new defender, but it's difficult because the only move is bishop f1, but then the queen can go to take a2. So he played d4, rook d4. Okay, let's see what happens if I take immediately. If I take immediately, maybe white can have some kind of play with knight e3. Exploit, white can exploit the pin. So black played correctly, rook takes d4 first, exploit the pin of the pawn e3. Rook f5 and now rook d2 and then after that I, queen takes a2. Uh, if now knight d3, like before, now it's not so good because there is a rook d8 because now the d file is open and the knight on d3 now would be pinned by the rook and black is winning now. So white played knight d4 and then queen d5. Very good move for black. Black is better, black is up a pawn so black wants to simplify the position and for sure, if we trade the queens, black has a winning end game. So white has to avoid the trade. But black wants to trade and plays always queen c4. Queen b1. Queen d3. And then queen a2. So okay, white can avoid the trade. But to avoid this trade now, white queen is in a passive position. And black can also look at the enemy king that becomes a little weak. Let's see what happened. Now, knight d5, black improves the knight, knight d6, queen c3, attacking the rook and the two pawns. So rook a1, queen e3. Okay, what's the point? Uh, after that, black goes for the king and uh, there is the idea about this moderate checkmate. So, for example, queen takes a3, let's say queen takes a3, for example, that could be an idea for him to try to win the pawn, then knight e3. And then the idea is a uh, check on f2 for the moderate checkmate. So if 
I don't know why place a move, I don't know rook there. Okay, rook there is a mistake, but to show you, the point is this checkmate. King h1, rook queen g1, rook g1, and queen and, and knight f2. So that's the mate that black wants to do. Um, so after that, white played knight, knight b7, knight b4, queen a3, knight, b, knight d3, and now again we have the same threat on f2. So bishop c6 because uh, white wants to have a new square for the king because now the smaller mate is not possible. But black theory played simply queen f4, and now. Granda do need a science because no way to defend this position. The bishop is under attack, knight f2 is a threat, the queen is very strong, knight f2, knight g4 is another threat to play for checkmate on h2. So at the moment, black is only up a pawn, but the game is completely is completely lost. And for this reason, Granda Zuniga de decided to resign this game correctly in this in this position. Um okay, it was a very, very nice game. Uh focused on the weaknesses, play for Find weaknesses in the new position, make weaknesses in the new position, and pay attention about the end game because um, Black Pawn A is very strong in the end game. At the hand, uh, was very interesting that Black decided to trade his strong pawn on A to have a very strong attack for the king. So it show you why in chess is very important to have a flexible mind because uh, sometimes okay you have a strong think that you can exploit, but sometimes you can change to have maybe a strongest thing to do so that's very a stronger thing to do so that's very very useful okay i hope that you enjoyed the video and if you have questions feel free to comment below thank you see you soon bye